Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Kickback. Uh, today we got a very special uh, guest here today. I mean, we welcome Corey Hope to the to the show. Uh, this is newly found uh, Hall of Famer, to say the least. <laughs> man, 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 thank you, thank you for having me. For, uh, you know, let me be a part of something special that you have going for on. Sure, for sure, for um, sure. Like you said, I think it's great. Great what you're doing. Uh, I know we spoke about some of the guests you've already had on here. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the brothers that we that we have, the friendship that we have, and what mm-hmm. we what we started from, and where we at today is is crazy. Man, it, I mean, it means a lot to me because like I literally met Corey when we were like bat boys for our dads, like growing up. I was probably like four or five. We were in that range, and our dads would bring them along or bring us along to their games. They would play softball. Or Big softball leagues in Lexington back then were like a real big thing. Early nineties, like yeah, early nineties. Like I remember my dad would come home looking the paper, looking at his stats. This is like for softball, like after, like <laughs> after your glory days too. So, uh, nah, man, but we would be bad boys just being there and in the presence of, of men. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of a good place to jump off because like the relationship that with your dad and the relationship with my dad, I, I see how that can impact and influence you, man. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about like how Dan Lee impacted your life as a, a, not only a father, but as a leader in, in his house? Yeah, man, so, you know, one thing I've always, um, actually it was last Father's Day. Mm. Um, you know, I always get my dad a card, gift, whatever. But last year was a little different. I I had him a picture of me and him, right. got it printed out, and I just like wrote on it like straight from the heart. Mm. And, you know, I gave it to him and just told him how important mm. and how proud I was of him, mm. you know, um, you know, never, never leaving the family, made mm. sure that, you know, my sisters and myself, my mom, we never wanted for anything. Right, right. Um, but more importantly from all of that, man, just, just seeing how mm. a lot of my friends that don't have father figures right, and right. how that's impacted their life. I know what it's done for me. Right, and right. And so I've tried to, you know, make sure that Kaylin, my daughter who's eight now, mm. I try to make sure that I'm providing for her, never leaving, leaving her without anything, and making sure she has a positive role mm. model and positive father figure male to look up to. Um, so, you know, Dad, if you ever watch this, again, oh, I, I appreciate everything you've done for me. appreciate everything you've done for um, not only for me, but my mom and my sisters. And, you know, he was a... He was a he was a mama's boy, you know. He, he lost ah. his mother last um, <laughs> lost his mother last November, so that took a big chunk out of him, man. Mm. So you know he's still you know still grieving a little bit, man. You know he he's a as anybody would be, yeah. Man, like, he, that's he, understandable. Absolutely, man. He he's one that don't mm. he don't say a whole lot. He don't let you know what's really bothering him. But you right. know me being a son, I know I know that's still that's still bothering. But to this day, man, he never. He never lets it stop him from mm. motivating and going and keep pushing, and that's what I, you know, I strive to do to this day. Man, it, it's funny you say that, man, because like, it's like now that I've become a father, I look back at a lot of the uh, interactions or encounters that I had with my dad, and I appreciate them so much more, man, because like when you finally have someone that you have to provide for, that you got to protect. Especially like us having girls too, yeah, right? Because that's a different level because scary. you're setting a different type of expectation for, for your daughter. And like, yo, I just look at that, look back and be like, man, Pops, I don't see how you did it. Because like our household, it was a little different. We both lived in Linwood, so you know my story. Um, coming up single parent household, like just having a lot of those interactions where at the time I thought he was being super hard on me. Like... Hey, I, you know, I see you hanging with them. You know what I mean? You might want to do that. Or he would prevent me from trying to go certain places. And I thought he was just being, like, overprotective for a reason. I mean, for no reason. But now I look back at it, and it was always for a reason. And for me, also, when I got to my teenage years, I started to rebel a lot. Mm. You know what I mean? To the point, it's like, man, I know what I'm doing, right. man. I'm making good grades, you know what I mean? Like, I got my car, I'm feeling myself, but... What made me realize he knew what he was talking about is he will always call the fate of people that I was hanging around. Mm. Like, I mean, like, he was at least 95% of the time, like, very accurate with what was going to happen to who. He was like, hey, man, you might want to watch this and this is going to happen to such and such and such and such. And I'd be sitting there like, man, what you talking about, man? They cool. They ain't going to happen. 
And I promise in three, four months, like, everything always runs off that way. And I'd be like, now that I look back at it, it's just wisdom. You know what I mean? When you young, you look at old people like, oh, y'all old, y'all out of touch. Y'all don't know what we going through. But it's literally, they went through the same things. It's just a different time period. Yeah. Can you attest to that from how Dan Lee helped raise you as well? I can, man. And, you know, having, like I said, having a daughter and watching him raise my sister. Mm. So she was, you know, older. We're six years apart. And I was able to get away with this a little bit more mm. than she was able to get away with. And you're the younger. Yeah. And I was the younger. That's, Ahmad was the same. Yeah. Way. Yeah. So, Shout out Ahmad, by the way. <laughs> she, uh, at the time, she was always, she was always bringing that up. Like, why Corey get to do this and I can't do this? Mm. Or he get to get away with such and such and I can't. But, you know, now having a girl, mm. you have to be protective. Yeah, for sure. Different way than you mm -hmm. are, than you are with the guys. Um, and then you talked about how your dad, you know, told you about certain people to watch. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was going, um, you know, high school, getting recruited, even in college, mm -hmm. you know, being on the college campus, he would always tell me, you need to watch who you're around. Absolutely. Everybody that's with you ain't for you. Mm -hmm. And man, at the time I was like, hmm. What is he, what is he really like, what saying? What does that really mean? Yeah. The older I got, I can see it now. Like yeah. everybody, everybody that's, you know, liking your posts, mm -hmm. telling you congratulations, they ain't, they don't really don't mean it. That's real. They ain't genius. So <laughs> I see it now. I recognize it now. But again, I just keep my head down, keep pressing forward. Um, yeah, man, I, I cherish those moments and those times and those lessons that he gave me. Mm -hmm. And man, he's still giving to me to this day. So. Yeah, I'm greatly, greatly appreciated for that. Man, it's beautiful, man. Because, I mean, here's a, the thing at Boardroom Vision, man, we always talk family. Um, we always talk faith. You know, just a lot, two of different the pillars that we have. Um, and from a family perspective as well, being raised by my dad, I've seen him, like, implement the faith piece in his life. So I've seen, I mean, I've seen two parts of my dad. The before faith part and the after faith part. And I've seen how it drastically changed him. You know what I mean? He, my dad, and he'll, he'll give his own testimonies one day on this show, but he went from a person that, you know, again, in the streets, Lexington, North Carolina, to being saved, to uh, bringing us to church almost, I mean, well, every Sunday, always through the week. And you seen something click in his heart that allowed him a different type of grace, a different type of uh, favor, a different type of passion. Um, so from a faith perspective, and I know, I mean, I don't want to leave Laura out of this situation mm -hmm. as well, because, you know, that's, that's like a mother I've never had, you right. know what I mean? So, um, how, how did that impact y'all household growing up too, from a faith perspective? Because I know you are a, a man of faith. Yeah, so, mainly for me, the faith part came from, um, you know, we still, my dad always, you know, always went to church, mm -hmm. um, but that kind of, that stirred with my mom, mm -hmm. like she was the one that, you know, if I stay the night with such and such right. on Sunday morning, I'm coming mm -hmm. to get you. know where you're going to be. <laughs> you know, sure. my dad was a little bit more lenient. You know, he would, you know, let me sleep in if I wanted sure, to. Yeah. But, but mom, she was, she was always, I'm coming to get you. Right. That's why you got to have balance. You're going to Sunday <laughs> school, you're taking your butt to church. So, yeah. um, you know, it's funny you asked that, um, you know, elevation. Um, I'm in a you know process of you know being a um, leader, an e group mm -hmm. leader um, from the youth standpoint. Mm -hmm. And on the application, it talks mm -hmm. about you know when did you really start in your faith and when did you really mm -hmm. start believing. And I, I again I always been to church, but it wasn't it never really hit me yeah. until around the late college years yeah. after I graduated college. You know, I started to get more and more into the Bible. Still, you know, did my own thing, right, you know, right. as we all do. Um, but back in 2016, it was I, I was in church. You know, altar call. The late John uh, Reverend, Reverend K. John W. K. Mm -hmm. Shout out John K. Yes. Man, R.I.P. Peace, yeah. Reverend K. Um, you know, he you know he's done his his Sunday altar calls, mm -hmm. and I just felt something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, I ain't, Never felt this before in my life. For sure. You know, we're standing up and, you know, I got my mom, got my dad, and it's like, it's me. We're mm. standing up waiting, you know, to altar call. And you know how they do when they when it's time to, you know, anybody that want to get saved yep, yep. and such and such. I didn't mm. take say nothing to dad. I didn't say nothing to mom. I just, I just went you had down. to go. I just you had to go. I spirit, felt man. it, man. And That's real. That was like one of the best one of the best days of my life. Just, you know, you know, let putting God first from that day mm. forward. 
Um, you know, still struggle here and there to this day as we all do. Nah, yeah, that's it. I mean, it gets harder once you make that dedication because yeah. the enemy is right there. Oh, you think you're doing this now? Yeah. Let me let me get you this right. and, and see what happens. So I yeah, get it. So that was a that was a huge year for mm. me, man. 2016. You know, just again, it was February, going up to get saved, and mm. later that year, um, you know, Reverend K. You know, they men's day, mm. and you know, you and the guys, y'all came in attendance that day to, to hear me speak. Mm -hmm. And that was like a, I'm like, why? Why am I asked to be? Yeah. <laughs> speak? I'm not a, I'm not a preacher. I've never done something like this, but it wasn't about preaching. It was just about, you know, giving your, your testimony, yeah. um, so some type of motivation uh, for the men that day. And, you know, since that point, man, I felt like that has opened up so many other doors spiritually, mm. connected me in a lot of other different ways with individuals and, mm. I think you know the. I'm I'm, I'm excited to see what's That's what's dope. to come from here. Hey, I I, I want to put a pin there because I want to come back to that because you did a phenomenal job in that message. I was there and I was very very proud of you that day, man. Like I, I would have called him Reverend Hope <laughs> moving forward, but that was his uh his his coming out sermon. But I want to go back for a quick second because I think it's important for our audience to hear this because growing up, I would oftentimes hear my grandma say. Oh, the Lord spoke to me, or I felt the Spirit, and like not really knowing what those words meant. Yeah. It's like God don't speak. Like I've never heard them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like when you say you felt something that day, can you describe that to like in a little bit more detail? So if someone has felt that and didn't know what it was, or could potentially feel it in the future, like oh, so they can be more aware of that encounter. Yeah, man, it was just like a, it was like a a common soothing spirit that just like it just came over me mm. bro. like I couldn't mm. it's kind of hard to explain again um, mm. the only the other time I had a crazy feeling like that was when my daughter was born mm. you know I was you know I, I was the first one she laid eyes on um, wow, you know, I pulled her out you know I, I remember stepping back and there was a trash mm. can over there I was trying to throw up and cut throw up. It was just like a different <laughs> weird feeling, bro, like of emotions. And yeah. man, it was kind of, you know, that 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 spirit when, when God, man, he led me that day. Mm. And, you know, I, That's funny. I I just hope that me saying this can open the door for somebody else, man. To, you know, don't shy away from it because, you know, at some point it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit you. And it can kind of scare you, too, because I remember my experience, right? It was actually a Father's Day when I went back home. Um, to my home church in Lexington. And the pastor at that time was um, Reverend Gray. And he called every, uh, anyone up that was looking for something. And when we was around the altar, he said, ask God for something. So I, I got greedy that day. I asked God for two things, actually. I asked him for a new job and a deeper relationship with him. Mm -hmm. But it was the first time I was ever genuine in asking that, um, the deeper relationship with him part. Because, I mean, I really meant that. I was like, you know, I done been in church. I don't really know you. Yeah. But... It's something that I do want. And like, he, the man of God came around, put his hands on me. And when I say, when he was anointing me, it felt like an outer body experience. Yeah. Like, I couldn't move, but it felt like just a bunch of energy just around you. It was like magnified. And I was like, whoa, what is this? This was the first time I ever felt the Holy Spirit, like genuinely. And I'm like, oh man, like this is dope, but I can't do nothing because yeah. I'm stuck. And... He, he looked at me, went over to the next person, and then just looked at me again and kept praying. I was like, oh, he felt it too then. Because he, he was looking at me like he felt it. I was like, all right, let me go up to him at the church and just kind of talk to him and yeah. see what that means. Make sure. Man, I went up to him at the church. He was like, young man, I don't know you. Because this was the first time me attending this church with the new pastor, by the way. He was like, I don't know you from the man on the moon, but God wanted me to tell you that whatever you ask for today, you got it. Mm. I was like, oh man, he felt it too. Like, I, I'm excited because yeah. it's funny because when I he said that, the first thing my mind went to was a new job. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get a new job. I forgot about the part of me asking to get closer to God. <laughs> and that's crazy because that's how we do, right? Mm -hmm. Like, whenever we get closer in faith, we start looking at what God gonna do for us immediately. So a year go by, no new job. Two years go by, no new job. Year three it was 2016 funny it's funny we got those same linking years uh well actually it was 2015 i started 
uh, to prepare for marriage, starting to read the word again for myself. Because I knew before I got married, I wanted to know what the Bible said about marriage. Right. Because this is a covenant I take serious just because of how I grew up, knowing the importance of family, so on and so forth. Uh, and as I started to read the word again, I literally, simultaneously, I've seen door after door after door open. And I look back at it and it was God telling me, just put me first. Mm-hmm. All that other stuff is going to take care of Man. itself. All the jobs you want, all the businesses you want, that'll come. Just put me first and everything will, will always work out. And I've tried to do that to the best of my ability ever since. Because of that encounter with that spirit, yeah. when you feel it, like it, it literally can change your life, bro. Yeah, man. And you, when you say putting God first, like that, that moment, you know, speaking at Men's Day, mm. like when I, when I was asked, you know, they, every year they do like a, a meeting at the church for mm. the fathers uh, or the men to see, okay, what do we, who we want to bring in this year? Right. What's the topics? What's the, what's the theme for the year? And I remember sitting downstairs in the basement at Foul Chapel. And it was uh, Dick and Pittman. Yep. <laughs> you know, they were going around asking folks, you know, who we want to speak this year? And Dick and Pittman mm. was like, why are, we, why are we asking around? We got we got somebody right here. Mm. And he pointed at me. I seen him point. Right. And I was like, man, I hope he ain't talking to me. <laughs> and it was me, man. And, right. I, and I thought to myself, like, what kind of excuse can I come up with? Right, right. Yeah. Out of this, <laughs> I've been there. You know, and I, I told him, I said, you know what? I'll think about it. And mm. it was that moment, you know, I prayed about it, and it wasn't even a week later. Couldn't like, shake it. I couldn't <laughs> shake it, but I knew that was that was God's mm. way of telling me, this is your time mm. to tell your story. Right. People that have, this is your time to open up. Because I never, you know, if I know you, right, you know sure. what I'm saying, we, we, we have those open and candid conversations. But if I don't know you... Mm-hmm. The, the conversation is very short. It's brief. You know, it's nothing, no intent, no harm intentions about right, it. Right, right. I just don't open up to a lot of people. Yeah, you, you protect yourself. I, protect I'm, I'm yourself, the same man. way, absolutely. And uh, that was the day that you know it was my way of opening up and telling my like my story. Mm. Like you've you might have heard my story from other people and thought you knew of me and certain things about me, but right. that was my day to kind of here it is. Mm. I'm opened up. Here I am. And it, it was just a, it was just a day I never forget. Man, this is the perfect segue, man. I promise it feel like we've been doing this for years because we have. <laughs> so when you talk about your story, man, I think this is the perfect segue into who you are, uh, not only as a a quarterback, a man, a father, but like, can you just give us a little bit about your story um, for the people that may not have been in attendance that day for for the sermon? Um, kind of let them know like, what was your path to kind of get to where you are today yeah um so just you know growing up and you know my whole it was there i was all sports football basketball that's all i really cared about so you know as a normal kid like the kids are coached to this day right. um you know all they all they focus on is hey i want to go to the nfl right hey i want to go to the nba oh i want to be this rapper which is all fine and great right so saying all that you know, coming up like middle school, early gra- elementary school, grades was good. When I crossed that street to go to high school, mm-hmm. start scoring touchdowns on Friday nights, scoring 25, mm-hmm. 30 points in basketball. That was my yeah. that was my focus. Yeah. So I lost sight of what was really important. And the crazy part, man, like my mom and dad was always on me. Just mm-hmm. making sure that, hey, just making sure you know your home, right. you got your assignments so, turned in. And they did a great job making sure he did not get the big head. Because he could have easily, like, with everything that was coming at you at that time. And I was right there for, for all of it. You know, I mean, we used to, yeah. he used to take me to school in the mornings when he got his license. Literally lived right around the corner. Yeah. Um, so, he been, he's been humble through the whole situation. And I think that's number one, a testament to, to Laura and Dan Lee. But also a testament to you because you've been able to implement a lot of what they taught you. Yeah. So you know, and you know, saying all that, I lost sight of again the academic side of things, the grades. Mm. And I went our principals at the time it was Rodney Shotwell. Mm. A report card came out. I never forget it. I still had this report card at my parents' house. Opened it up. 
and he had some words in there. Mm. And he said, you will never make it in life with grades like this. Mm. And I was like, man, mm. it was kind of eye opening because, you know, that, this was like the latter part of my 10th grade year. Mm. Still thinking, okay, still passing. Be all right. 11th grade year. Right. Recruitment start is real heavy. Right, right. And this is when, you know, all the big schools are coming in. Some, you know, SEC, ACC. Mm. And again, first place they, when they come in that school. Yeah. The first they, stop. They go into this transcript. They go to see that transcript yes, of the guidance counselor. Yes, sir. Yeah, we like this whole kid. Yeah, is he going? <laughs> is he going to qualify? I'm still thinking. Yeah, man, I'm good. I'll be all right. Mm. Senior year come. Yeah. And it was that time. Grades went now. Mm. I was, I was able to qualify academically, for certain schools. Right. But for a school like Virginia Tech, mm. I didn't qualify academically. So had to go to Hargrave Military Academy, mm. which was one of the best decisions. To this day why is that discipline mm. like you know the first night or two cry myself to sleep yeah i remember i remember it's sure. a lot different oh, than man, North Carolina, was, i'm sure you you got your you got your bunk beds yeah you got two dressers you got a sink mm. two closets mm. and that was it mm. no ac i remember having a box fan in the room this is in <laughs> chatham virginia which is in the middle of nowhere yeah. so it was 95 degrees mm. Fan blowing out warm air. I'm like, man, I'm laying in the bed and I just, I'm sick. Like, why? Yeah, am I here? different. <laughs> That's a lot different. Like, the decisions that I made leading up to that point, mm. those are the reason why I was there. And so, you took ownership. Had to take ownership. Yep, that's real. But, you know, I, I said to myself and I told my parents and I told Coach Beamer at the time, you know, when I graduated in June mm. and rode in Hargrave in August, I said, I'll be out of here at the start of the year. Mm. I would be out of here. So again, didn't qualify academically from an ACT, SAT standpoint. First time I took it at Hargrave, good to passed. Go. Good to go. So I knew once I passed there, my focus at that time shifted on, okay, I need to start getting ready mm. mentally and physically mm. to get me where I need to be at Virginia Tech. So, you know, man, it, it, the sad part for me was here I am. I got two amazing parents at home and I done nothing but in my mind, I've done nothing but failed them mm. because I I, che I cheated the system, tried to cheat the system mm. from an academic standpoint. Telling them I've done my work, really hadn't done my work. Telling mm. them I'm studied for my test, really ain't studied for my test. And man, it just came, it came back to bite me in my butt, yo. Mm. But again, that, that time at Hargrave, man, those, those four or five months were like the best, the best time for me mm. just from a discipline standpoint academic how to study how to really put put time apart to study because mm. it was every day yeah for sure you know we it was something we had to do right before bed with we'll study halls mandatory man, study that's hall. good man yeah man so again man i mm. I, I cherish those moments of hargrave and me and my brothers you know some of the guys at hargrave we got a chat and we talk about some of those times man where it, it, it kind of it, it was rough it, it was the transition man and i it's funny you say this because like i look at uh, a lot of kids now, when they leave high school, uh, they may not qualify, go to a JUCO, be back home in, in two weeks, or uh, they may go to a college, may not suit them academically, be back home in less than a month. Yeah. Um, I know you probably may have had some of those thoughts sometimes, right? Especially when you're saying you're crying yourself to sleep those yeah, first man. Uh, two or three nights. Like, what... What was that thing in you that said, you know what, I have to, like, I can't go back home. I have to endure this for a semester to get to my, my next step. Um, just hearing stories of some of the other star athletes, mm. good athletes that come through Lexington. Mm. They go off to different places. A semester or two, they back mm -hmm. home. Mm. So that that was one of the things that was always in, my, in the back of my mind. Like, come on, man, you've... You put yourself in this situation. You, you, you don't get yourself up out this situation. Man, I, if I'm hearing correctly, number one, you're taking ownership. Got to take ownership. Number two is having the vision, which, again, boardroom vision, we're all about making sure you can identify your purpose and what you're pushing towards. Mm -hmm. You identified your vision and knowing what you wanted, saying, hey, I don't want to be 
in this situation. I want to be at a D1 school, being able to get an education, being able to reap the benefits of D1 as opposed to staying in this spot that you know is short, like yeah. supposed to be short term, short right? Term, like, yeah. It's, hey, we're going to go do this for a semester and we out. But in during that moment, you had to do that to get to, to what your next step was. And I think that's important because, and we talked about this in the, in the G um, episode as well, it's, I mean, we can't have instant gratification in everything we nah. do, man. Like, a lot of the stuff that we're looking to push towards, either you want to be a rapper, you want to mm-hmm. go to the league, you want to uh, make it in the corporate world. None of this happens overnight. Nah. Like, hey, I'm in the corporate world and have exceeded a lot of my expectations. However, it was a lot of nights where I'm sitting there studying the 5, 6 in the morning for a test at 8. You know what I mean? Like, But you don't hear people talk about those instances because... It's not the most sexy thing to post. Right. People just gonna post you the vacation in Bora Bora or Mexico or Cancun, and it's it's the fruit of all the work that you put in at the at front. Um, and if you could just talk about that process of putting in the work um, to get to D one, and then what it's like actually in the comparison from D one to to Hargrave. Yeah, man. So I, I would say, you know, a lot of like camps mm. really helped me. They put me put me in a spot that number one to be exposed to mm. other talent outside of what I would see at practice right. or what I would see in the county. Mm. Um, you know, every camp that I went to, Chris Leak was always at the camp. Yeah, for sure. To, and, uh, and Drew he, Williamson. And, and for our audience, if you're a little younger, you might not know who <laughs> Leak is. Go look at your North Carolina uh, yeah. <laughs> record book. Yeah, like, Chris Leak was one of the. The, at my class, he was the best quarterback in, in the country at the time. Number one yep. quarterback, you know, in Carolina. Uh, number one prospect in the nation at the time. So every camp I was at, I saw him. Mm. So I saw how he, mm. like, even from a just showing up. Right. You know, a lot of times, right. you know, we show up, just think we going to, you go to work and just. Mm-hmm. You're going to be the best out there. Yeah. It's, it's going to be easy. It ain't, it don't, it don't happen. You had to work, yeah. It, you have to work. So. Mm. Just seeing how, from a preparation standpoint, how you need to come in, like, not mm. only from a physical standpoint, but, like, mentally, you got to be locked in different yeah. than the next man. Um, so, a lot, like, a lot of camps from exposure, mm. AAU, even though, you know, I went to school for football, AAU basketball, you know, playing with Chris Paul, Rayshon Terry, a lot mm. of the guys from, like, the triad of Thomasville, yeah. them, them guys, man, Brandon Setzer, Roy Pete, who we, yeah. we competed with. Um, you know, with Lex and Thomasville, but yeah. on that level there, man, it was it was top notch talent and mm. seeing that I knew I had to up my game. Had to elevate, yeah. Had yeah. to elevate my game, man. So, you know, you know, my, my cousin Anthony Fuller, um, who, you know, I, we talk we talk every Shout day. out Fuller, man. Yeah, yeah and my, my cousin Anthony Fuller, man, he you know, when I was 12, 13 years old, you know, he would come pick me up on Saturdays and Sundays mm-hmm. and we would go to East Third and this is when, you know, JJ Page mm-hmm. and, and his prime, um, you know, Bubba, who they still balling to this day. But these guys, this is mm-hmm. when they in their prime. They big, talking junk. Yeah. I'm that little kid on the block, and, you know, I'm playing. And they, and they got something to prove. They're they trying, they trying to make you better. Yeah, yeah they're that, trying to make you better. Yeah. And, they, and they, that street ball mentality that kind of helped me. Make you tougher, yeah. Make you tougher, got me prepared in high school. Mm. Um, but, yeah, man, some of the, I, I wish still to this day, that I didn't start late in mm. the game. I wish I didn't start 11th grade, 12th grade year, mm. preparing myself to get to that college life. Right, right. Um, especially physically, man, because, you know, when I got there, I never forget my first, in practice at Virginia Tech, one of my first plays mm. was like a speed option. Mm. So I remember, you know, speed option in, in high school, I'm gonna get to that corner, probably fake out a guy. Right, go. right, right. Man, I got the snap, and this was at the time, man. We had the this is when Tech had like one of the top. We had like the number one, number two defense in the nation at that mm-hmm. time. This is my redshirt year, so I'm scout team quarterback. Mm-hmm. So I'm lining up as Daryl Tapp, Jim Davis, Jonathan Ooh. Lewis. Ooh. Man, you know we had um, Vincent Fuller. He was one of the corners. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Green, Jimmy Williams, and all these guys. Jimmy Williams, second round draft pick. Eric, um, Eric Green, he was the top pick. So a lot of these guys, NFL prospect. Yeah, man. right. I get to get to snap. <laughs> Think I'm about to get to the corner, and this D ends running just as fast as me. Mm. <laughs> so that in my mind, I'm like, yeah, man, I got a lot 
I got a lot to do and I got to do it quickly. Yeah. To get in tip top shape and to get to where I need to be physically. So right now, yeah. coaching AAU football, I'm telling these guys, you know, they're sixth grade Dope. to eighth grade, like, man, y'all need to get on it now. Yeah, for sure. You if you go if you want to take it to that next level, mm. I, I tell these guys, you gotta look at NFL as being the best of the best. For sure. Like doctors, astronauts, airplane, yeah. the pilots, like yeah. this is the top, the Doctor, best of you gotta the take, best. You, you got to take, take it, yeah. it serious, man. So when John running two miles, you need to be running three miles. Mm. If he doing 15 push-ups, you need to be pushing yourself to do 20 push-ups. So it's, all, it's always more mm. in you. Than you than you think you got in you for sure. And I didn't realize that until I got to college and actually like trained mm. differently. Mm. So it was big, man. It was big for me. Yeah, man. Cause I, I even remember like as we were starting to, I guess, really push for our what your senior year, my junior year, uh, before games, we would like be on the, the on the field before games, running routes, just really trying to pay attention to that detail. Uh, to make sure that we're going to get this uh, playoff game one, so on and so forth. And, like, I've seen that transformation in you because, like, that wasn't in you your entire career at yeah. Houston. You know what I mean? But that senior year, like, it was a different type of leader starting to come out, and, and you took that ownership on. So as a leader, like, what are some of the things that you think translate well from football to even how you handle a lot of your everyday business now? Yeah, just being the... Being a quarterback, um, you know, early years we, like freshman year, we were, we were terrible. Trash, yeah. Yeah, we were. Uh, <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no sugar coating. We were just, we were just bad. And I was, mm. you know, I didn't come up thinking I was gonna be a quarterback. You know, I was, you know, I remember in middle school just throwing the football one day and, mm. hey, you gonna be the quarterback one day? It just happened. Yeah. Just it kind of just happened. And then I kind of being forced in that spotlight, you know, freshman year. All right. Sophomore year, a little better, but we yeah. were still, you know what I'm saying, we struggled. Junior year, we kind of we, we, we kind of turned the page a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew at that time, like, man, we really got a chance next year to sure. be something real good. Yeah. And, like, the prior two or three summers, I spent those years, it's all AAU. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, would, I would miss the football workouts. Right. And I was thinking to myself, like, this is your big – it's your last season. Yeah. You're the leader of the team. You got to be present in these workouts. Absolutely. You got to show up every day. And we had um, this was the year we won the nationals. So my the, the summer leading up to the senior year mm. was the year we won the 17 and under AAU nationals. Mm. And I had to make a decision. Am mm. I going to the nationals? I know I'm not going to school for basketball, and but we are playing in the nationals. Or right. do I stay here and train with a team and some brothers that I know we got a we got a real shot this That's year. It's a big decision. Yeah. And I didn't go to the nationals, stayed home with the team. Mm. And man, we like for it, it it showed like the PSK Classic that year. Yeah. Down in NC State. Yeah. It was like the, a lot of scrimmages, you know, you know, teams down in North Carolina and we showed up, man, and man, it was huge that whole summer, yeah. man. Cause like, man, we did so many seven on sevens. Uh, I mean, in dark, I don't know if y'all know about the heat in, in North Carolina in the summertime. Humidity. Like humidity is ninety five easy in these in these seven on sevens, and we were in one like at least two a month, you know, if not more. Uh, but we put a lot of work in that summer, man. We did, man. Like, it was fun times, though, man, because I look back at some of the moments, bro. Like, just the camaraderie we had as a team. Like, it, it infiltrated that team so much to where when the first game of the season came, like, we was ready. Like, yeah. and we had the confidence because, all right, you got to be here on this play. You got to be here. And, and timing was so fluid. But um, I say all that to say, man, again, everything goes back to the work that you put in prior to getting there, man. We had Tim on the, uh, on the show a couple uh, weeks back, and one of the statements I, I took away from that is championship is in the details. Yeah. Like, man, that's I, I, I literally stick with that ever since that conversation, man. It's, it's even pushed me mm -hmm. to be more cognizant of the details that I'm putting into the work, even on my corporate job and my business, so on and so forth. So, um. I mean, nah, all this is good, man. I think this is a great conversation. Um, and to kind of switch gears a little bit, um, from a football perspective, one of the most important or important things 
that I think about you is you're not someone that just got used by football. You used football. Hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that's so important to kind of highlight for our kids because, uh, again, everyone has that dream of going to the league or uh, so on and so forth. But there are so many other opportunities. And I got to find something while you're saying that. No, no doubt. That one can get when getting that free education, leaving with no debt, or going to a school like Virginia Tech, yeah. you know what I mean, to be able to get the network, because I'm positive the network that you built at Virginia Tech was just worth the scholarship alone oh, from absolutely. knowing the brothers that went to the league to um, having connects in corporate America, mm-hmm. because that's the other part that's often missed about going to college is the network that you build. Like I got so many friends and and and. Uh, connections that I've developed with people over the years just because of those four years in college that are irreplaceable. And, I mean, honestly, it's, it's how I've gotten jobs. It's how I've uh, learned how to invest. It's uh, how I found deals on, on certain um, things that I may be purchasing or, or, or looking to, to adapt. So can you speak to that just a little bit more on how to use football and not allowing it to use you? Yeah, so um, at the, when I was my, my red shirt year, now, let me get this pulled up here. But my red shirt year, my, my quarterback coach, Kevin Rogers, mm-hmm. there was a player at Tech at the time. Some stuff went on or whatever. And he said, Holt, I want you to use football mm-hmm. and don't let it use you. I'm thinking, I said, what exactly is he saying by that? Mm-hmm. And again, I'm 18. I really don't. It's not registering to me at the time. Yep. But now, it's like okay. And then this meme that I, I found, I posted a couple weeks ago on Facebook. It says, "God used football as a vehicle to help me get an, get an education, mm. learn discipline, build relationships, discover my passion, mm. and live out my purpose." Mm. And I was like, man, that's like everything in a nutshell. Yeah, video. that's real. Just from you know, from a discipline standpoint. People think, you know, you mm, you playing football, and all you do is go to school, go nah. to practice. <laughs> man, like you they don't understand the work that you have to put yeah. into like, you know, you got your five you got the five AM wake ups, yeah. six AM workouts, practice, mm. study hall. Mm. And you're still an athlete. Still, that's, I mean, yeah, still a student. Still a student. student. Yeah. So that's even like <laughs> yeah, another man. dynamic to it. You know, then you got, you know, some of the road trip games where you you know, you still mm. you still gotta get the work done. Mm. You still gotta be <laughs> eligible from an NCAA standpoint. Um, and then just the discipline side, you know, like I said, the study hall, um, you know, mom and dad ain't there to wake you up. Yeah, that's real. That alarm clock gonna go off, but am I getting up to go to class that's today? Real. That's real. You gotta get up and go to class. Um, you know, that teacher, that professor, mm. they're not gonna be looking over your shoulders and there's three hundred students in there. Mm. So you're not showing up, you're not turning your assignment. Mm. You don't hurt yourself. Your vision is accountability. It man. is, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, it just, you know, that football was that that, that driving force, man. It just mm. has opened so many doors for me. And now I remember, you know, we went to the, the Orange Bowl. And I'm on South Beach. Mm. I'm like, man, I'm just yeah. <laughs> a little kid, man, yeah. from Lexington, North Carolina, you know, used to play in the projects on Link Circle. Hey, 167 Link Circle. Wood, <laughs> playing football in the middle of the streets. Yes, and here I am in the Orange Bowl, yeah. Sugar Bowls. In Something Miami. I never that, thought yeah. about, bro. That's dope, bro. And it was That's just, dope. it was, it was, it's a great feeling, man. And, you know, I reaped a lot of the benefits from that. And to this day, I still am. Um, mm-hmm. And I say that, you know, because I'm able to teach others mm. like some of the experience that I went through mm-hmm. um, you know just trying to instill in them the importance of doing more yeah uh, giving more um, you know being selfless yeah um, that's, that, that's that's a big one man be, just being selfless man and you know I got at tech at the time mm. um, you know my I think it's my junior senior year you know I'm not playing um, you know backup quarterback but the coaches they knew at the time when I was competing for the starting job mm-hmm. that, that summer, how when I didn't win it, I was, you know, pissed right. off, of course. Right. But I never let that stop me from being who I am. The leader. Still, yeah. still showed yeah. up, still congratulated Sean when he threw a touchdown, Tyrod when he threw a touchdown. Mm. I was still that same guy, man. That's real. 
um, you know, and a testament to that as well is, you know, one day my father came up, we used to have scrimmages mm. and I had a bad scrimmage one day and I just kind of, I left the sideline and I'm like crushed. Yeah. And afterwards, man, I just like, I cried. Mm. You know, we was on the way, you know, mom, dad, and at the time my niece was, she was young. Man, I'm, I cried, bro. Like I was like, man, I can't believe I just went out there and performed like this today. Mm. And you know, my, my dad being the man he is, man, we had a real genuine conversation. Right. And he was like, man, you know, it's gonna be a lot of struggles in life, but you gotta always hold your head up. And he said, man, don't, Dang. don't ever let the next man see you cry. It's like, okay. Mm. He's, you know, competing for a mm. job like that and, you know, not performing the way I know I can perform. Right. I should have been performing at that particular time. Yeah, that kind of hit home. And then a week later, mm. My mom, she had wrote me a, and I, I, I'm driving my Suburban today. I got this note actually in the, um, in the console. Right. She wrote me a letter, and she was like, you know, I could, I could tell, and I saw it. How I, I felt your hurt. Yeah. And she said, I don't want you to ever feel like you can't show your emotions. Mm. But when you show your emotions, is important. Cause I had my niece, mm. yeah, my niece, man, she was young, so her looking up to me, you know, mm. I'm like a huge figure to her at that time. Right, right, right. She sees me crying, and you know, she's probably had thoughts. They driving back down wow. the road, like, wow. is, is Uncle Corey okay? Right, is right, he gonna yeah. be all right? My leadership, so, man. Yeah, man, yeah, that, it was a, just that's a big, <laughs> that's a big thing, bro. Yeah, man, that that day that, that taught me a lot as well, man. Um, wow. You know, and also, and y'all, y'all still get on me to this day. <laughs> When my mom came on the mound and smacked me, <laughs> little league baseball man, I, you know, I'm walking batters. <laughs> Somebody hit a home run off of me, so I remember catching that, catching the ball back from the, you know, the catcher, yeah. and I just slung it to the dugout and try to walk off the, walk off the mound on the field. It. I see this lady <laughs> leaving the bleachers. This is when we used to play at Robbins Field, and she met me at the dugout, walked me upside my head. Mm. That taught me so much, though, bro. Like, regardless of that circumstance or what's going on, yeah. you're not gonna quit on your team. That's right. You're not gonna, you know, leave this game because you're not performing well. Right. So it, it, it taught me a lot, man. And I, you know, I love my mama, man. She was, she was my rock. She never, never let me get by with nothing. Man, it's a lot of gems in here, right, man? I, I really hope y'all picking this up because, I mean, I'm hearing number one, the the, the leadership skill of, of not giving up. You know what I mean? The leadership skill of being able to show your emotions, but picking the proper places and proper times to express them. Um, And even just um, not, like, just being there. You know what I mean? Like, being present, being able to give your all, man. Um, I want to double back for a quick second, though. Um, You made the statement of being able to give back um, and and things of that nature. I know you've been able to recently start a, a foundation in Lexington, North Carolina, the Corey Hope Foundation. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and how that's inspired your purpose? Yeah, so, you know, uh, back in 2017, um, I started to think, like, what can I do? You know, we had we had Dream. Yep. Um, so we had a we had a nonprofit as well, you know, my, uh, being myself, and it was, you know, six others. Right. Um, you know, trying to help the youth, the males in Lexington. Um, you know, and you know, a lot of guys, you know, got married, guys moved out of, you know, the area. So, you know, we kind of life progressed, life progressed, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking I'm still quote unquote in the area a lot, Right. I know there's a need. What can I do to Mm. kind of help out and continue to help out? Um, so, you know, something I I thought about, prayed about it, you know, second guess myself a lot, you know what Mm. I'm saying? Cause I don't know if this is the right thing to do, if I should be doing it. And I just said, bump it, man. I remember one day at work, I'm like, man, I'm just going to fill out this paperwork with the state. Right. And I'm going to do this. Do. Prayed about it, man. And, you know, you know, this was back in February 2018, mm. um, you know, when I you know, filed paperwork and all of that. But February 19 is kind of when the Core Health Foundation was established. So um, it's dedicated to uplifting the youth through, you know, education, recreation, and outreach. Um, so we've been trying to do a lot of different outreach events. Um, done some education mentoring mm-hmm. opportunities 
Um, that happened right before COVID. So I haven't been able to do mm. more mentoring, uh, but you know, more of that will come. But mm. man, it's just trying to find different ways to impact others, give back. Yeah. And I, and I talk, I've talked about the word selfless a lot. That's for sure. And serving. Man, you know, being, being on this side of it now, um, you know, being able to be in certain meetings and hearing, you know, the needs in the area. Absolutely. Man, it's, it's a lot, bro. I agree. It, it's a lot. And, and it's not only, you know, from a, our demographic, mm -hmm. it's not only us, it's all kind, all kids. Yeah, that's and real. It's all, that is real. All individuals with life that, that are going through things. And, you know, I've been, I've been blessed and fortunate mm -hmm. enough to partner with a lot of different, you know, foundations. That's real. Um, you know, my church, Elevation who does so much outreach, um, you know, every day of the week, that's doing something in a triad across this world, you know, pouring out, uh, being able to connect with Josh Bush and his foundation on a lot of different projects as well. So, you know, Josh has done a lot of great things in Lexington. Um, so, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm not at the point now where I want to be from a this expand globally. So right, everything right. right now has been hometown focused, right. where I was born and bred at, at a lot of individuals helped me navigate through my early childhood and my, and my teen years so that's what I'm trying to do right now man just you know the, the guys you know while well, I'm coaching football talking to them at practice I don't want to hear you know coach I want to score this I, I want to have how, how them grades look yeah that's you real. Know, what, what what's something that I can help you along the way with in life mm. you know you know having mm. some kids man and then, you know taking kids home and having get to into have that real conversation getting those real, and even you know, a kid that may not have his dad there and you know that they could be looking at you with that type right. of figure, it makes it even that much more of an impact. Man, that, now that's powerful, bro, because, and even just going back to something you said, it stuck out to me, man, like, the needs of a community, we always oftentimes look at things from a black context, right? Like, you know, we look at our projects, we look at, you know, different impoverished areas, but, like, the, the fact of the matter is, like, the kids in the, the mobile home communities or... Uh, our, our white poor kids as well like they deserve to have a, a better life as well and we have to be more cognizant about what can we do to impact change where we are at you know what i mean and a, a lot of that is driven off purpose that's one of the reasons i wanted to start this platform man like just going through my personal coaching sessions i identified the uh my purpose is being or helping men not make the same mistakes that i made mm. And I mean, it, it sounds like you got a lot of the, the similar same thought process when yeah. it comes to that, man. Like, how can you help the person behind you avoid some of the things that you may have had to encounter, man? And it's big for me because, you know, especially going into election time where it's so much on the line um, and we're in a country right now that seems so divisive um, and things just need to change. But change oftentimes happens first with us looking inside like how can i affect where i'm at first yeah. before trying to put it on whoever's in office or whoever's the mayor or whatever the case may be because we got the power to impact change more than anybody and i think that's big for what you're doing in the corey hope foundation i appreciate it because it's something i wish we have more of across the board mm -hmm. and you're only one man you can right. only do uh I guess what your realm of responsibility is for right now and it will be global but i hope someone else is inspired that's watching this no matter what age you are to find out where, what you need to be doing at this specific moment because purpose changes over time too right now it may be like for us we started dream in our early 20s yeah but when cats got older had their own kids now purpose is kind of being defined by your own family right. like all right before i go help someone else like I got to make sure my kid, you know, yeah. is in the right situation and the school they're going to is, you know, in, in good situations. So, no, nah, man, I, I commend it, though, man. I just wanted to bring that point home because if we really going to see change, we got to focus for where we are and making sure the whole pipeline is in place from our education to um, yeah. our athletics, our coaches, like making sure people are getting the right mentors and put in place. And I think, man, we, we had a – we were fortunate enough to have – some some strong black men for sure. you know outside of you know our fathers for sure that help us along the way like robert harrison was one for me robert harrison I, I, I salute that man to this day one of my aau coaches yes. growing up man like he would bench you uh if you didn't give 100 percent in practice yeah. you know what i mean he wouldn't let you get into the game like just certain stuff like that man it's all values yeah 
Robert Harrison, um, even Andre Brody. You know, he started. Shout out Brody, you know, yeah. He started sure. the AAU, the AAU league, man, that gave us something to do yep. uh, in the summertime. Um, and even like, you know, right now, um, Jesse, Anthony Bowens. Like, hey. A lot of folks really don't understand like what he's done. Mm. Um, you know, I remember when he called before a year before we did, you know, the Lex and Gators. He was mm-hmm. like, "Man, I'm thinking about doing this AAU football. Mm. I want you to be my coach." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't mind." At the time, I'm still helping out with the recreation department. Right, right. That next year, he was like, "Man, I'm ready to do it." It's like, "You sure?" Mm. It's like, "Well, I'm coaching. You know, my first priority. You know, I'm still mm. I'm with the rec, so this is my my priority. But I'm, you know, I'm gonna help out here as well." Right. Uh, so there was a lot of backlash between you know the rec and yeah. the AAU, yep. which was. It's Lexington hometown politics. Yeah, <laughs> man, I was yeah. I was kind of bothered by that, man, because it, it wasn't like we were trying to steal kids or not tell kids to play with the rec. Right. AAU was just an, another avenue, another it's platform to get these kids mm-hmm. exposure, yep. man. Like, it's good to see the talent that you're playing with in, in the county mm-hmm. area. I mean, but, man, once you get outside... Three, three, six. It, it goes back to the statement you made earlier about going to camps and saying how Chris Leak prepared yeah. and how you were preparing. Like, you wouldn't have known how to prepare like that because, I mean, again, we grew up in Lexington. Right. A lot of what we did was there. But when you get that exposure and can see other talent and mm-hmm. how serious they take things, it makes you up your game because you know how you got how much better you got to actually be. Exactly. Yeah, man. So that, that was... Mm. It was it was a key man for you know not only not for not for Jesse or not no recognition for me but for the kids to see mm-hmm. stuff outside of Lexington and Davidson County. That's real. So like we went up last last spring, uh, we took the kids up to Blacksburg mm. in the spring, and you know Virginia Tech Athletics, thank you for a special day that day. They uh, showed us around the facilities. They let the kids go in the locker room. They took the kids in the um mm. and the indoor facility let them put the jerseys on and like mm. just play around that's dope. that's dope um you know in the new area there's a lot of different photos and one of them uh, it's like an orange bowl portrait mm. and it's they see me up there wow so to see a kid at the time from, a their, kid, hometown, from their hometown yeah, that's dope. on a painting in virginia that's dope and man, it kind of it was just, it was special. That's dope. And That's they dope. Uh, you know they got to go to the sprint uh, the mm-hmm. scrimmage in the stadium and meet the players. Like, out this is possible. You know, what I mean, it, it gives them possible, it man. gives them inspiration to say. And even when you get to a college campus, you're like, I'm here. You know, what I mean, yeah. like this is what I see on TV, and you get that aspiration to say, Yo, it, I want to go to college one yeah. day, even if it's not Virginia Tech. They it, it puts something in them to go out. It gives them vision. To go yes. out and want to do what they need to get yeah. done. Yeah. On the way up. That's like, dope, man. They, That's dope. We're going up um, 81, 77, mm. 77 to 81. So they're seeing mountains. Yeah. And they've never seen mountains. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's, it's the exposure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why like, I pray to God every night. And I, when I wake up in the morning, I just say, man, can you, however you plan on using me, I'm, I'm open for you to use me. That's dope. And... They got that exposure because I was given an opportunity to play at that university. Mm. So, man, I'm, I'm very thankful, man. Like I said, I never, and y'all always get on me in a chat about, you know, being humble and all of that. But I never like the, I don't like to bring all that stuff up. And it's funny you say that, right? Because I remember when we were kids, or in high school, rather, and we had just left the awards banquet. I can't remember if it was uh, for basketball or if it was for football. Um, but you were taking me home. It was just me and you, and you looked over to me and like, man, I literally do not like all that spotlight, bro. Like, I hate that attention, bro. Like, it, it, and you were genuinely saying this, bro. Like, you were venting, man. I don't know if I'm supposed to share this on camera or not, but like, I looked at you and I was like, yo, that's real, bro. And like, it explained so much to me of why you've been able to maintain that level head because the accolades and stuff is not something that you hang your hat on you know what i mean it was the pushing to be better pushing for a ring yeah number one because every day coming to school he would he would always do this he, he'll remind that. us hey this is what we trying to get i, I mean get we didn't get it that year unfortunately because of some injuries <laughs> but <laughs> 
but you know, stuff happens. But the motivation was there, the sights were in the right place, and it was never really like about self. And I can genuinely, honestly, say that. Yeah, man. Uh, I just, I don't know, man. I, I just, just, just kind of how I've been. That's and real though. My um, like my dad, if he, if he's introducing me to one of his, like high school boys or something, right, right. Like I don't like to be introduced as. Yeah, he went to school to play football. Yeah. I just want to be in the news that this is my <laughs> son. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a proud father. You know, right for me. So, right. you know, he tells us yeah. what I did and, you know, so forth and so on. But, yeah, I just, really? I don't know, man. I just, I've never been that one that like to toot your own horn. Yeah. Um, you know, the Hall of Fame, though, was kind of different. Yeah. Because that was kind of like, okay. You kind of you've been recognized. You've been recognized forever, forever, forever yeah. for all the stuff that you that That's you've done. Right. And right. I remember, man, getting. I remember getting that call. Like Ronnie called me. I'm thinking, okay, something maybe. Yeah. They need some water or something. Pour <laughs> in some water. It's like, hey, man, it's calling. Let you know, man, you uh, mm. you're a Hall of Famer. You got voted in. I'm like, uh huh. Lead candidate, by the way, this year. He, uh, he's leading the pack this year. That was. And, and, and this is. Behind a lot of other inspirational athletes, shout out Dennis Bird, you know, Monique Murphy, Monique Murphy for and, sure. Yeah, hey, man, so <laughs> that was special, bro. And I, um, a couple tears card coming down. Wow, and this is at the time, you know, pandemic time. Yeah, my daughter's she's home doing school work. This yeah. is, and they are they only <laughs> like 10 minute brain break, so she's in there with me. So she's like, Daddy, what's wrong? I'm just like, nah, maybe my my allergies just messed. Like somebody had cut nothing. Yeah, my my, my <laughs> allergies messed with me. Man. She's like, you might want to take some of your medicine, daddy. But yeah, man, it was it was just a lot of emotions, bro. That like, mm. I can't explain, but it was just like, man, you in a prestigious that's real class. Like my, I got you know family in there. My uncle, my uncle Rory Hope Choker. Yeah, um, shout out, shout out Rory. And then his son Hulk, um, uh, uh, Roy Hulk. My uncle, then Rory Hope, my uh, my cousin. So to be in the Hall of Fame with, with them, yeah, and some dope. of the others, man, Tojo, Dean's May, that's dope. Joe Mack, that's dope. You know, Monique Murphy, as I say, my. Cause these are all people that we looked up to growing up. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you hear these names tossed around, it's like, man, yo, that's that's Joe Mack, that's yeah. Hulk. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. That's great company, bro. It is. It is super dope. And man. I always felt like, I felt like I never was able to get to some of their level. And when I say that, not from a not from an NFL standpoint, mm. but every time I walk in mm. Field Pot Stadium, you know, you look at you look at the the, um, the field house be somebody. Yeah. But you look right and you see the state championships from, yeah. the, from the first one being in 30, 30, I get 33, 34, all the way to the last one in 85, 86. Like man, we supposed to have one up there, two thousand two, two thousand three. Yeah, it's like I get it's it. like a chapter that that's left open, man. In yeah. my in my book, if I ever write a book one day, man, that's gonna be it's gonna be somewhere in that yeah, chapter, man. I feel you on the, that. The undone, man. So, but I mean, man, success is defined in so many different ways, true. man. And for me, I look back, like we gained a lot of great experiences in that, man. Like, but. NWB, like we formed some yeah. great everlasting relationships. Like a lot of my interviews have been like just me hollering at my boys, you know what I'm saying? So like that time period was just special, man. And even outside of football, man, just us pushing each other now to still have a lot of those same connections and just be yeah. better men um, from how we raise our kids to our faith to our health, like everything, man. Like we... I mean, that, that time was special, man. So, I mean, you made your mark. You know what I mean? You are definitely solidified as Hall of Fame. I mean, we all knew from our end it was going to happen. <laughs> the win is just, you know, kind of the, the thing that was a little bit more in the air. But, man, it's here. Um, and, man, I, yo, I'm proud of you, man. Like, and just even, again, outside of football, the man that you are today, the purpose that you have on your life, the calling that you have on your life, um, on how you're a father, on how you mentor and coach the kids that you work with, you know what I mean? And even just how you've extended in, into the corporate world, man. Like, we didn't really get to touch on that much, but, like, 
I mean, it's special, bro. Like, it really, really is, man. So I'm proud of you, man. Like, for real, for real. This is it's, this has been fun, man. I, this is the conversation I was looking forward to. Um, I mean, we might not play football no more. The competitiveness have, have, has gone to the golf course. But, yeah. hey. It, I'm trashing. <laughs> I'm getting there. We, we getting better, <laughs> to say the least. But, man, no, nah, I appreciate you, bro, for, for coming on, man. And, like, yo, this is this has been great, man. I think it's a real good conversation. Appreciate you again, like I said, for having me on here. And again, man, a lot of my success and awards and where I am today, it doesn't happen without people like you, people like, our, people like our circle, man, sure. every day. Like I say, in the chat, man, we always, sure. we yeah. highlight and, and we, we pushing each other. That's real. How can we get better at certain things? That's real. And none of that happens without y'all, man. And, you know, and if any kids out there watching, man, like, you have the opportunity to write your own check. Mm. Like I, my one thing my my dad always told me, man. You know, trouble is so easy to get into. Yeah, it's so, so hard, hard to get, to get out, out of. Yeah, that's yeah, real. So make sure y'all are. That's a country man saying, right? Tell me, well, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> wise man. In every eye, man, and I can say thank you, and I can say all the guys mm. that I've been around, every coach that's been a part of my life, every teacher has mm. motivated me. Um, Mr. Holt, my principal. Oh yeah, man! Shout out, Mr. Holt, you man. That, so. was, that was another black male yeah. that we had growing up that we were able to leverage. I man, I could, cannot forget him. I'd be remiss if I did. Done so much for me, man, and um, make England. Yeah, you know, I don't, yes. I don't get in the Hall of Fame as a quarterback without you having me out to practice, yeah. throwing over the goalposts, <laughs> throwing in the back. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. None of that stuff happened, man. So you know, <laughs> nothing else, man. I'm. I'm blessed, man. I, I can't, you know, thank God for everything he's done for me and everything that's about mm. to happen, bro. You mm. know, I'm, I'm excited about it and I can't wait for it to happen. Man, one thing that I do like about us, though, is that, like, when you look at you, Jesus says, Terry, Facts, uh, Pat Lat, like, it, man, I don't want to forget nobody. Sean, like, all the fellas, man. Hoovers. Like, the Hoovers, like, man, everyone is legitimately happy for everyone when they are doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there is really no hate, bro. And, yeah. like, that's important, man, when you're growing up, man. You got to get yourself a circle that, that ain't going to hate, you know what I mean, that, that's going to motivate you to do more. And it, it, it breeds, just it just breeds success because everyone's pushing each other. And it's important, bro. Yeah, it is. So, and like, I, man, that, that's, man, it's a great. Yeah, when I pray at night, you know what I'm saying, when I pray – even in the morning or throughout the day, and if it's about y'all, I don't say, mm. Lord, bless my friends. Yeah. Or watch out with my friends. It's my brothers. That's real. That's it's real. Like, that's what, man, that's we've real. been, we've been doing real. this since you and I, since Link Circle days. For sure. The Backboard days. For sure. And WB <laughs> since late middle school, yeah, right, high school. For sure. So, man, we, we like connected. For sure. Like, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no, it ain't fake. It's all authentic, mm -hmm. genuine, real love, man. And that's find you some friends um, that's gonna motivate you. Find you some friends that everybody's gonna be pushing you to be better. Not only better um, at your your craft, or whatever. Just be a better man. Um, yeah. Be better man, and you know, continue to build, man. And I don't take us for granted, bro. Hey, I, man. I really don't. Thank God. Hey, man, I, on that, man, hey, I just I got to salute the man. I appreciate you. I mean, and that's a wrap, man. That's another episode of The Kickback, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. And, um, you know, you know how we end, man. We, we I like to end with a nice little mm -hmm. top seven. And today, I think I'm going to end up with a top seven or something a little related to football, mm -hmm. man. So if you could, give us your top seven quarterbacks, quarterback. QB 12. Top seven quarterbacks. For sure. Um, pay homage to Doug Wiggins. Okay. Randall Cunningham, those guys. Okay. Man. Um, obviously, Michael Vick, he, you know, put Virginia Tech so, wait, on the... Is Doug Williams in your top seven? Yeah. Just, okay. From, okay. Yeah, just, okay. From, a, okay. just from paving the way standpoint. All right. So, Doug Williams, Randall Cunningham. Yeah. Michael Got Vick. Got Mike Vick. All Michael right. Vick, like I said, college, Virginia Tech, the, the lefty, like his, his whole I swag. I respect that. Um, Troy Eggman, being a Cowboy fan. I can respect the that. The triplets, you know, got got us some Super Bowls. I'm not a big Troy Eggman fan, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Troy was surrounded by a lot of good talent, but again, that's, you know, he was my quarterback. Um, and then Peyton, you know, Peyton from a 
Shout out to Peyton. Just from his wisdom, knowledge of the game, mm-hmm. how he controlled everything at the line of scrimmage, and yeah, now nah, you gotta you gotta pay homage to that. You gotta pay, you gotta pay homage to that. Um, and then you know Tom Brady, the goat. Okay. The goat. Okay. He TB twelve. Okay. I mean, I, hey, I, you won't hear a peek from me yeah, about man. anything, Tom T- Brady. T- I used T- to T- hate, but now TB twelve. He solidified. Let, oh, let, let's say this again. We got. Randall Cunningham, mm-hmm. Doug Williams, mm-hmm. Troy Aitman, mm-hmm. Michael Vick, mm-hmm. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. So we Dude. got one spot left. And it's going to be a little, kind of go catch some people by surprise probably. But Doug Flutie. Yes, that did catch under me under, <laughs> under, under six feet. The way he okay. maneuvered through the game. He got one of the most famous plays in college football history, okay. the Hail Mary. I mean, a lot of Drew Brees not that tall either. He's not that but, tall either. He's not that tall either. But you know, Doug, Doug Flutie, I'm a, okay. I, I, I like his, I liked his the way he maneuvered through. It's a very games. diverse his, list. I get that. His crap. Yeah. No Steve Young. Nah, no Steve. Nah. Young. No Steve. Young. No Joe Montana. You know, he's a niner. You know, there was a lot of robbers back in those days. I know. Days. That's what I'm you bringing know, it up. You know, I used to be a niner fan. Yeah, Back in the but day. you know, I, you know, you can't forget about you know Joe, Brett Favre, those yeah. guys, man. A lot of, a lot of great, t- and even today, like as black quarterbacks, they setting up. Yeah, nah, it's, it's crazy. It's new now. It's crazy. Like you gotta have the run option. Yeah, you got cats like Mah- Mahomes who has a cannon for an arm. So nah, it, it's getting real out here, man. Well, hey, bro, that's the top seven. You know, we putting a bow on this thing. It's a very diverse list. You know, I don't know if I agree with all seven, but you know, this is his seven, not mine, so I can't critique too much. That's not my favorite of. All, that's not the favorite QBs of all t- top QBs of all time. Just my my favorite. I get my you. Top seven. I get you. Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, we get we put the bow on this thing. Thanks for tuning in to the kickback, and hey, tune in for next episode. Follow us on all our social media platforms. We're at Boardroom Vision on Twitter, um, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Facebook. And um, if you would, we hope, man, give us give us your, your handles where that people can find you at, man. Find out more about the Corey Hope Foundation, be able to donate and, and things of that nature. Yeah, so Corey, the Corey Hope Foundation on Facebook, uh, the Corey Hope Foundation on Instagram, um, www.thecoreyhopefoundation.org is my website. So okay. you can find out a lot more information on those on those social um, media networks. Um, Ben can always get in contact with me as well. So, yep. And if you're looking at my website, I actually have a link to his on there as an affiliate partner. So um, if you want to get to it through there, you can get through that as well. So again, man, thanks for tuning in. And it's a wrap, man. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Mm-hmm.